today we're going to review just a little bit about fractions and decimals and comparing them on a number line. The first thing I want to remind you of are just some basic facts concerning these fractions and decimals. I just want to remind you that the numeral 1 is the same thing as 1.0, which is the same thing as 1.00, which is the same thing as 1.000. And you can add as many zeros. As long as the zeros come after the decimal point with the number 1, then it's equal to 1. I also just wanted to remind you that any number over itself equals 1. So 1 equals 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, any number, 100 over 100 equals 1. So that just gives you an idea of uh, just a quick thing there. Then I wanted to remind you of some basic fraction to decimal things that are equivalent. And usually I like to think of these in terms of money, and that usually helps me recall those facts a little bit more solid in my brain. So I know that always, without doing any kind of conversion, that one-fourth equals 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. And how I think of this is one-fourth of a dollar is a quarter. And so that just keeps that in my brain without having to do a lot of conversions. I also know that one half equals 50 cents. So one half of a dollar is 50 cents. Two fourths and one half are equivalent fractions. If I had two of four quarters, I would have 50 cents. Again, thinking in money just helps me with those basic facts. If I have three fourths of a dollar, I have 75 cents. If I have three quarters, I have 75 cents. And one that's not quite as common but would be good for you to kind of get in your brain solid is a fifth of a dollar is 20 cents. If I have um, 20 nickels, I have a dollar. So those are just some basic facts. And these you really need to start kind of memorizing and know in your brain if you already don't. So basically, I want us to look at a couple of things on the number line now. Uh, to use as comparisons. So this number line is taking us, whoops, I have the wrong number right there. This number line is taking us from four to five. And I'm having to decide which numbers uh, are in order and, and where they fall. So I've kind of marked this off in increments for you and knowing that this is the halfway mark between four and five. So that would be four and a half, which would be the same thing as 4.5. So if I was given the number four and three fourths, where would that fall on the number line? Let's remember it's got the whole number four, so it's going to be somewhere between four and five. So it's this fraction that we need to remember. So, again, in my brain, I'm thinking, hmm, three-fourths of a dollar is 75 cents. So, I know that that also equals four and 75 hundredths. So, four and three-fourths. Let's see where the fourths are. This is a fourth. A fourth. A fourth. So, that's two-fourths and three-fourths. So, four and three-fourths would fall right here. Four and three-fourths. If I was looking at as a decimal, they are the same, so four and seventy-five hundredths would fall between four and a half and five. If I add a zero here, it's kind of easy to see 4.50 is smaller than 4.75. And if I have my equivalent fractions here, 2 fourths is less than 3 fourths. And that's how we would figure that out. So let's look and see where um, 4 and 1 fifth might fall. 4 and 1 fifth. 
we learned on that previous slide that one fifth is equal to 20 hundredths. One fifth of a dollar is 20 cents. So these two equal the same thing. So I can look up here and say, hmm, well here's 4.50, here's 4.75, so I must be on this end of it and uh, learning about 4 and 20 hundredths. So I'm going to look here and 1 fourth is also, this just gives me an idea, is 4 and 1 fourth of a dollar is a quarter. So there's 4 and 25 hundredths. This is 4 and 20 hundredths. So it's going to be right below that. It's going to be smaller. So we'll just kind of randomly put right in here 4 and 20 hundredths. And that would also put up here 4 and 1 fifth. So I'm just using that little bit of knowledge. So I know that 4.20, 4.25, my numbers are getting increasingly larger when I go this way. And when I go this way, they must be getting smaller. So let's just look at a couple here. One more example, and then you'll have some to do. Lucky you. And this is just looking at numbers from 0 to 1. And I've gone ahead and marked in the middle a half, because we know smack dab in the middle is a half. So if I wanted to figure out where one fourth was, what would be the easiest way for you to figure it out? You may want to think of it in terms of a fraction or you may want to think of it in terms of a decimal. Whatever works in your brain to know. But I know that half of a half is a fourth. Right here are my fourth increments. One fourth, two fourths, three-fourths. So right here is where I'm going to mark one-fourth. Now, while I want to confirm that, I know that one-fourth of a dollar is 25 cents. And is it reasonable that, that 0.25 is smaller than 0.50? Yes, it is. So as I go this way, my numbers are getting larger. As I go this way, my numbers are getting smaller. If I had seven eighths, seven eighths, well, if these are fourths, one, two, three, four, then these must be eighths. So here's an eighth, 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 here's an eighth. Over there would be the last eighth right there. Those are all in increments of eighths. So where is the seventh eighth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right here, seven eighths. And it falls right there between. So you're going to look at some examples today or sometime this week and figure out where they fall on the number line.